take two. Welcome to another insightful episode of Me and My Health Up with your host, Anthony Harcher, a healthy man, according to my kids, aka clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being. And today we'll be chatting with skin specialist, Darcy Shoemaker, on how to create glowing, vibrant and youthful skin. And it's something we're all striving for. Darcy Shoemaker is a brand ambassador for Rogan and Fields Skincare, the number one skincare regime brand in Australia and the number one premium skincare brand in North America for the last four years. With an engineering degree and a background in medical devices, Darcy found Rogan and Fields from an acquaintance on Facebook after struggling with her own skin. After seeing some incredible before and after photos, Darcy walked away from a successful career in engineering to be hands-on mum with her two lovely, beautiful, very active boys and, her, and to run her own skincare business from home. Darcy takes great pride in simplifying skincare for her clients and watching them grow in confidence. So welcome, Darcy. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing fantastic. And where are you from? I live in the United States. I'm in Minnesota. Yes, I could tell from the accents. <laughs> I thought I'd ask you. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're teleporting across the world, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, so Darcy, this is the question I always ask my guests, and it's essentially how they've arrived at what they're doing today. And it really brings out the passion in what they're doing today. So uh, please share your passion around skincare and how you've arrived at what you're doing. Well, I had actually struggled with my own skin for almost 20 years. I had something called melasma, which is dark spots across the face. It can be from hormones, from sun damage. I spent way too much time in the sun as a kid, and I had dark spots all over my face that I really, really disliked. I had been to the dermatologist in my early 20s, and that's when I found out they were permanent. I tried some of the expensive prescription creams without much luck. I had tried a lot of over-the-counter products over the years, and I had just kind of given up hope that I was going to find a solution. Um, about, again, about 20 years is how long I struggled. And I saw these before and after photos on Facebook. I was super skeptical. Um, and I watched for about a month until one day the before and after photo hit close to home. I wanted my skin to look like the picture in the, the after picture. Um, it remind, my before skin reminded me of that before picture and I wanted that change. And I saw that there was a 60 day money back guarantee. And I'm of the thought process that you can't complain about something if there's a potential solution out there. So I reached out and I assumed I'll try these products. They likely won't work and I'll get to send them back and at least I'll get a refund and I won't have to put them in my product graveyard. The cabinet or the drawer that everybody has of the products they've spent money on that didn't deliver the results they wanted. So I reached out and I we started talking about the products and I realized I wanted more than just for that. I was 37 years old at the time. I was getting the fine lines and wrinkles. I struggled. I had the hormonal acne after having two kids and my skin was a mess. I needed a lot of products and on a stay at home mom budget at the time, I didn't think I could afford them without considering the business. So I considered, I looked into the business and decided to jump in. I wanted the discount and I wanted to pay for my products. So I did. And I couldn't believe how quickly my skin started changing. Changing. Um, my friends and family started asking me, what are you doing with your skin? I want some of that. And my business quickly grew from there. But it's after coming from someone who has struggled with their skin, I love helping others help their skin too, because you don't have to just deal with it and cover it up with makeup. Yeah, and that, that's really important because at the end of the day, we're looking for solutions uh, externally. Um, uh, you know, for our skin and, and people are going and, you know, looking for what's on the shelf at the chemist or what other people have tried. So what, what is it important uh, for people to look out for when they're choosing their skin products? Because it, it really affects um, how their, their, their skin breathes, how it lives. And, uh, you know, as a lot of us know, uh, skin health is really important in terms of the a detoxification pathway. And so it needs to breathe. Uh, it needs mm -hmm. to let out toxins. And in some of these skincare products off the shelf can actually really act as a barrier uh, and really inhibit the skin from breathing and living. So what is it that um, the listeners should look out for when uh, choosing, you know, skincare products for themselves? 
I would be careful about shopping at the drugstore, at the grocery store. I would look at premium skincare products, whether those that you buy at the department store, or those you buy through the direct selling channel. Um, the, the determination of premium skincare really matters because that is the percent of the active ingredients. So I know here in the United States, I've seen a lot of skincare commercials lately talking about hyaluronic acid, uh, benzyl peroxide, salicylic acid, and you're not going to get the same percentage of those those ingredients in just the over-the-counter drugstore products. If you go premium, you're, you get what you pay for. So you're gonna spend a little more, but you're gonna get much better quality of products. They're not throwing ingredients in the jar just to make a profit. They're putting in ingredients that truly serve a purpose and they only put in ingredients that, that matter. They're not gonna put in those fillers. So I think the biggest thing is, is premium skincare really matters. Um, and then knowing what are the harmful ingredients and trying to avoid them because there are plenty of harmful things out there and you don't wanna be putting those on your skin. It's your largest largest organ of your body um, you want to take care of that yeah there's lo lots of those petrochemicals uh, that are in, in as either fillers or uh, uh, emulsifiers and uh, yeah they're cheap uh, because they're yeah. byproducts of uh, petroleum <laughs> so um, it's uh, it's something that you certainly want to avoid uh, is there any particular ones that people should should avoid um, that you know they should be looking out for oxybenzone is a big one that's in about I think it's like 80 to 85% of sunscreens. That's a hormone disruptor. Other ones are parabens. Um, they're, those are the biggies I can think of off the top of my head. Um, you really want to, it, it's pretty easy to do some research and figure out what are the ingredients you want to avoid um, and then check those in the skincare you're using. Absolutely. It makes a big difference. And uh, yeah, so just as important in terms of what we put on our skin uh, to enable it to live um, as, uh, well, it's our largest organ. Our skin is our largest organ. Uh, so we need to look after it. Uh, so, you know, being mindful of as to what we put on it, we also need to make sure we do things well from the inside uh, to, you know, make sure we nourish our skin, our lining, our barrier. Uh, so, uh, you know, our, our skin's one of our immune defense uh, barriers. So really important that we uh, nourish it. So what do you recommend, you know, from an internal perspective uh, in terms of what listeners should do for their skin? Hydr Hydration is big. Drinking plenty of water. I know that's been around for a long time. People should always drink more water. Keep a big jug next to your spot. Um, but hydration from the inside makes a big difference. You can put hydrators on your skin, but really coming from the inside, that's going to make a big difference in hydrating your skin. Um, sugar is another big one that can flare up acne, especially. Um, and managing stress, eating healthy, fried foods aren't good for our skin. There's a lot of foods that we're putting in our body that are just not good for our skin. So taking care of the gut health is another biggie. I know with some of those sensitive skin issues, eczema, psoriasis, um, some of those autoimmune issues, those are all gut health. And so taking care of what you're putting in your body will make your skin look a lot better. So the skincare will just work with that too. Yeah, so those, those vitamins, those vitamins A and C and E, uh, zinc uh, is a big one for the skin. Uh, so making sure, you know, that the, the foods that we're going to get vitamin A in, uh, vitamin C, you know, pretty much your fruit and vegetables. Um, so, uh, you know, your, your beta carotene uh, from, you know, those... Uh, uh, we know the uh, carrots and um, the sweet potato, uh, so the orange uh, looking vegetables. And then, you know, your zinc will come from uh, your nuts and seeds uh, in terms of plants, uh, legumes, uh, grains as well. Uh, for, you know, meat, meat lovers, then there's plenty of zinc uh, in meat as well. So uh, certainly, um, you know, for, and I think it's exactly what you said, Darcy. It's it 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 is making sure you're eating clean because all those foods I just mentioned are very clean foods, um, mm -hmm. and it's not eating that takeaway food. You know, that fast, deep fried food or um, heavy heavily processed foods, uh, and heavily processed foods have a lot of sugar. And for the same reason, uh, as we talked about before, sugar's cheap um, as well as. Uh, it's very, um, you know, tasty <laughs> and then and people have lots of it. So, uh, yeah, so certainly, yeah, I, I agree with you. Eat, eating clean and uh, getting plenty of um, lean uh, animal sources and plenty of uh, plant-based sources such as your nuts, seeds, legumes, fruit and vegetables into your diet. And I, I think what I really liked uh, was that you mentioned that hydration because it's often overlooked, isn't it, uh, the hydration mm -hmm. side of things. Uh, so, Absolutely. Yeah, so certainly get, making sure you're getting those eight 
cups of water a day. Um, you know, if you're, uh, I don't know what it is in in America, and into, we talk <laughs> in, in milliliters and liters, but you know, certainly we're aiming for that two plus liters of water a day. Um, I know, I know you're talking in that <laughs> imperial system. <laughs> so, Half the body weight in ounces. Half the body weight, is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. in ounces. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, so uh, what other factors are really important for skin health? Uh, so, you know, we've talking to, spoken a bit about, you know, in terms of what we eat, what we consume, uh, what we put on our skin, but the, what are the other influencing factors that uh, help our skin? So first of all, washing your face, <laughs> that's a very basic thing, but people should be washing their face in the morning. They should be washing their face to wake themselves up, get their skin ready for the day. And then at night, washing off any dirts and oils, makeup residue left behind. Um, getting into developing a routine is really important too. Um, but washing their face, not just using the bar of soap in the shower, actually using something that's made for your face. Uh, another thing is sunscreen. I would say sunscreen would be my number one skincare tip. 80% of aging is due to sun damage. And you can get sun damage through car windows, office windows. So whether it's sunny, cloudy, raining, you're inside, outside, sunscreen should be an essential part of someone's skincare routine every single day. Um, what else was I gonna say? And then give it time. So some people will buy a product and they use it a few times and they're like, well, that didn't work. And then they try another product and they just keep cycling through. But to really see the results of products, it takes time. It takes four to eight weeks of a new routine to really see the changes, just like with any habit. So just to be patient, if you're trying something, really give it a, give it a try versus just a couple uses and they say they don't, that it doesn't work. So those would be my biggest. Um, and then eyes. The eye area is the first place to show signs of aging. So anybody over the age of 25 to 30 should be using a good eye cream to really help prevent wrinkles. Preventing the wrinkle, prevent, um, the best wrinkle is the one you never get. So it's much easier to prevent wrinkles than it is to treat wrinkles once you get them. So starting young um, to really start preventing those wrinkles is key. Yeah, and we, we spoke earlier just before we went live. I was uh, on the uh, the sleep and the stress side of things you're talking uh, to me about in terms of important factors. What, what would you like to share in terms of the sleep and uh, stress management, uh, self-care? Oh, sure. So sleep is super important. That is when your skin is restoring itself. So if you're not getting enough sleep, you're not giving your skin time to heal and restore itself. So seven to nine hours is always ideal. Um, if you're getting up really early, just make sure you're getting to bed soon enough. And then managing stress. I can't tell you how many people that are struggling with acne and they're getting it under control and then boom, they have a stressful week at work and then they're getting a breakout. So really managing that stress, finding healthy ways to manage it, whether it's exercise, um, any sort of stress reducing things will make a big difference in their skin because if they're stressed, their skin is going to show it. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, under stress, we're certainly uh, our detoxification is uh, affected. Uh, our body's doing other things uh, to keep us alive. So I, I know you know liver function is uh, downregulated uh, with stress because our blood is elsewhere. It's you know to our muscles, you know where it needs to be to uh, keep us running away from that fear or that uh, danger. And uh, it's not so that you know the liver hasn't got the normal circulation of blood, and and it struggles with the detoxification. And when it struggles with the detoxification, then the body's looking to remove toxins elsewhere and it will topple over into the skin uh, as you know, another way to detox uh, because there's less detoxification happening through the uh, liver. So certainly, yeah, I totally agree with that, that stress management. And we, you know, we see so much of that in our lives today um, in terms of our demands from work and um, just the busy, hectic lifestyle that we live. So, you know, that self-care is uh, certainly, uh, we need more of it, <laughs> more holidays, <laughs> uh, more, more self-love. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, sleep, sleep's one of these things that we, I think is, like we put into that nice to have and we, and we generally, it, it, it always gets sacrificed, um, you know, because there's something you don't want to miss out on. And I think, you know, just as we're going to get into your skin um, regime shortly, but I think that nightly routine, uh, which you mentioned having, you know, a, a morning skin routine and an evening skin routine, uh, and that can tie it nicely with a um, nightly sleep hygienic routine, because 
I think, you know, at night, if you're nourishing your skin, uh, you're doing something for yourself, you feel good about doing something for yourself. And that in- enables those stress hormones to uh, dissipate um, and and to leave just before sleep time. So certainly, I think, in, um, yeah, having a nice nourishing skin routine in the evening will help you wind down. And, uh, uh, you know, a good one in the morning helps you wake up and you're doing something for yourself again. Uh, so you feel better about yourself. And I, I certainly know when my clients are feeling better about themselves, they generally make uh, healthier eating decisions. So it just flows on, doesn't it, in terms of yeah. um, uh, doing that self-care. Uh, so yeah, let's get into your skin uh, regime. What do you do to look after your skin? So our company has a philosophy called multi-med therapy. It's the right ingredients and the right formulations in the right order. There's no one magic bottle or cream that's going to solve all your skin concerns. So it's a multi-step approach. So um, the, the regimen that I use, it's a cleanser, it's a toner, and then it's a treatment step. And then it always ends with the sunscreen. And then at night there's a night cream. So um, I've used a variety of our regimens over the years since I have them all at my house, but that's been really helpful for my skin is just to have that consistency. And that is really what's helped fade those dark spots. It's helped with the hormonal acne, the fine lines and wrinkles. Um, It's helped with all of that. So just, I do it morning and night. And the one thing I like to tell ladies, especially is wash your face earlier in the evening. Don't wait until you're ready to go to bed. I tell them to wash their face right after dinner, right when they get their kids to bed. Early in the night, that makes the big difference between washing your face being a spa-like relaxing experience, a stress relieving experience, or more like a chore. If they wait until they're so tired and they just wanna go to bed, it's gonna feel much more like a chore. So the earlier in the night people do it, the more relaxing and more fun it is for them. So that's that's my biggest thing, is, is just having that habit and doing it early in the night. I, I agree because the earlier we start that wind down, the more chance um, we have in terms of having a restful, uh, rejuvenating night's sleep uh, because we're essentially downregulating those uh, stress hormones from the day uh, and we're yeah, nourishing ourselves uh, to put us in the best state to uh, go to sleep. And I, I like having something like a, a routine like you just suggested because it switches the mindset from, okay, I'm not in work mode anymore. I'm in, you know, self-care, self-love mode. And that's calming to the mind. And, you know, things that you could do as sort of adjunct to that skin routine could be, you know, playing some nice music that you enjoy um, and really making a, uh, I guess, a an inviting routine. So you've got the nice music, you're taking care of your skin, um, you've got some nice warm water on your face. Uh, you know, you dim the lights. You could have candles going uh, to reduce the lighting to allow the uh, melatonin production to kick in. Because uh, we, we know that, you know, the more we're looking at blue screens, it's inhibiting the melatonin production. And we need melatonin to let the body know it's time to sleep. So, uh, yeah, I, I think what you suggested is is a great way to start that wind down and start it early so that you don't you know, fast track it and take shortcuts and sometimes, yeah, and not do it. Uh, so I think Absolutely. it's really valuable. Um, is there any other tips you'd like to share around uh, skincare that we haven't touched on? Yeah, acne. Acne is one thing I like to talk about because so many people are affected. 85% of teens deal with it at some point in their life and adults too. Many adults deal with acne. Um, And it's a difference between spot treating the acne and preventing the acne. It's a 28 day cycle. So by the time you see that pimple popping up, it's been working under the skin for 28 days. So it's really important for people that suffer from acne to get in a a regimen where they're using some of the acne fighting products, the benzyl peroxide, salicylic acid, sulfur, and consistently using that to prevent the pimples rather than spot treating them once they pop up. They're gonna see much, much better results that way. Um, So that's the biggest thing I touched on that the stress and the sugar also can affect the acne. So really combining all of that together and it really should get under control. And then just some of the the really important ingredients that people should be looking for, especially for anti-aging products, hyaluronic acid, I think I mentioned earlier, niacinamide is another good one. And there's a newer one called Bacuchiol, and that has the benefits of retinol, but it's really good for sensitive skin. So retinol is good for so many things, dark spots, wrinkles, acne, but it's very, very harsh on the skin. And a lot of people with sensitive skin haven't been able to tolerate it. So this is a newer ingredient that is still 
healthy, it's a good ingredient to use, but it's much better for those sensitive skin people. Um, and then for acne prone skin too, looking for things that are non comedogenic, that means it's not gonna clog their pores. So many times women, especially if they're struggling with acne, they try to cover it up with makeup, but they're using makeup that's clogging their pores and it's just getting them in a tough cycle. They're clogged their pores, that's causing more breakouts. And then they just have this whole acne cycle. So using products that aren't gonna clog those pores while they're treating their acne is gonna make it it, it get under control much, much faster. Yeah, because as I touched on earlier, it's a living organism, you know, we, we, we need to allow the skin to breathe and to, uh, uh, to protect us. Ultimately, uh, it's our first line of defense against uh, infections. So um, really important that we, uh, you know, we look after it in, in that sense and, and not block the pores um, and, and allow detoxification uh, if it needs to uh, go through the skin because it, it will inevitably uh, do, you know, partial detoxification through the skin. So, uh, yeah, no, I really like those, um, those tips, Darcy, uh, you know, really, uh, I think you've shared a lot with the, uh, the listeners as to, you know, it's a, it really takes a holistic approach, um, to looking after your skin, you know, looking after the insides from, you know, cutting out the junk food, the processed food, eating really clean, lean, lots of fruit and vegetables, making sure you're getting the, the vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, zinc, uh, from your clean eating, uh, you know, looking after your gut health, as you mentioned before, and that's very much making sure, you know, we're eating a lot of fiber in our diet, which is again, whole foods, uh, clean foods and not processed. And that holistic approach around what we do, uh, to our skin uh, in terms of what we put on it, as well as how we uh, get our sleep, making sure we get a good night's sleep and manage our stress. Anything I've missed in that summary? No, I think you covered it. And really, I mean, if people aren't happy with what they see in the mirror, don't settle. There are solutions out there. I had kind of settled for almost 20 years. And when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, it affects everything. It affects your confidence. It affects going after that big promotion or going out on the date or going out with your friends and truly enjoying yourself if you don't like what you see in the mirror. Makeup should be used to enhance people's looks, not cover things up. So I just encourage your listeners that if you're struggling with your skin, somebody can help you reach out and get solutions. There are solutions out there for you. You can love your skin. Everybody should love their skin. And how can our listeners best connect with you, Darcy? Uh, they can find me through email, through the social media platforms. I am on Facebook as Darcy Nolting Shoemaker. I'm also on Instagram at Darcy Shoe. Um, but definitely I'm happy to answer any questions that your listeners have. Fantastic. Awesome. I'll include those uh, contact details for Darcy in the show notes. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for listening in. I really appreciate uh, your support. And uh, please like and share the episode, leave a review so that we get more people learning about their health and how they can look after their skin in particular. And stay tuned for more insightful episodes of Me and My Health Up. Thank you.